Hi, I'm Eric Jurgensen, a hobbyist blacksmith based in Oklahoma City. Welcome to my basement shop. I recently acquired this new apron. Now I need a drive hook so I can hang it. Let's get busy. I'm using quarter inch rod and a coil that is just over eight tenths of an inch inner diameter. The bend is for the nail portion of the drive hook. I want the final nail to be about an inch, so the bent part should be about half an inch. I want three inches for the hook part. This side shelf is three inches. I'm being careful not to hammer through and hit the hot cut hardy. I need a square corner here so that there is metal lining up with the nail for driving the finished hook into the wall. Notice that I avoid heating beyond the corner in the direction I'm hammering. I don't want to make the shaft thicker, just the corner. I'm using a very light hammer with rapid but light blows, which helps keep the forging effect limited to the corner area. I'm doing a little straightening here. It's important to straighten as I go so things don't get out of hand. Now I do the heating the other way because I will hammer toward the nail part. It's a big benefit not having to cool this in water like I would have to with coal or propane forge. I'm continuing with light, rapid blows and straightening any time things get too far out of line. I also forge the side bulge back in, which has the added benefit of filling out the corner. This process is often, and somewhat controversially, called upsetting a corner. Upsetting is the process of thickening by hitting along the axis rather than the usual perpendicular blows. The controversy comes from the observation that mostly I'm driving the bend all the way to the inside corner and correcting the resulting side bulges. I'm not really doing much upsetting, though I am doing a little. At this point, I've got pretty much all the metal in the right place. I just need to square it up. Now I'm heating so that I can draw out the taper for the nail. As with typical drawing out, I'm forging with a square cross section, drawing out on two sides. And as is traditional with nails, this will be left square. As you can see, I'm working at the heel of my anvil, which gives me easy access to all the parts of the nail that I need to hammer. Further forward, I can't put my hand underneath So this is a very easy and convenient place to draw this out. Okay, there we go.
Now a taper for the hook. It didn't quite turn 90 degrees here, so this has got a bit diamond in cross-section. So I'm rounding it up, and then I'll forge it square again. And then, now I'm forging it square, and once I get that to my satisfaction, I will round it up one more time. Now I'm rounding again, basically knocking in all the corners, which gives me an octagon, and then I'm knocking in the corners of that until it's sufficiently uh, approximation of a round cross section. And a magical heating by the edit process. Now I'm going to curl the tip. Curled tips are a traditional finish. Um, they look good, but mostly they also keep you from catching things on them. And I'm carefully tightening this up. I don't want to squeeze it flat. I just want a nice round curl that touches the stock where it comes back to me. There we go. But I've done one thing wrong. I put the curl on the wrong side. However, since this is a round cross section, when I twist it to the right side, it's unnoticeable. Okay, now we need to heat it up to bend the hook, which we will then bend over the horn of the anvil. This anvil has a nice conical horn that works very well for doing this kind of work. Pretty close, but I see a little spot that I'd like to bend slightly differently. So, there we go. Now I need to heat the whole thing so that I can brush the scale off. Note how I use the end of the coil and work the piece around rather than taking the time to change out to a bigger coil. For just this one heat, it's not worth the time of changing out the coil. This is a Carnauba based wax. Carnauba wax melts at about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So ideally the metal should be about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature the wax runs well, but it doesn't scorch. A little cooler and the wax wouldn't run. Uh, another 100 degrees or so and then the wax would scorch and blacken and I don't like that look. So I just need to get wax in all the spots and hopefully not burn my fingers which so far so good. Now let's wipe off the excess wax and we've got a finished drive hook. I would like to extend a special thank you to my mother-in-law, who necessitated this drive hook project by giving me the apron. Thank you. You're the best.